personalization to me infers a very high curated experience. So if I'm expecting personalization and you present me with something that has nothing to do with what I'm here to shop for, I become immediately disappointed. It's almost like you managing my personal expectations, and we have to think that way about our, our customers that are coming in to shop with us. It's time for CX Education. Welcome to the podcast for enterprise CX professionals, the people who want to connect with customers on their own terms, before, during, and after a purchase is made. In each episode, you'll learn how to create experiences your customers love. Ready? Here we go. Hello, and welcome to another episode of CX Education. I'm Heather Garand, and this episode is brought to you by Singe. Today, our guest is Tara Conway, a pioneer in omni-channel retail with several Canadian brands. Tara, thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited to be here, Heather. Thanks for having me. We were just talking about the weather, but, you know, hopefully things will clear up and continue to stay nice and warm throughout the summer. So... Let's start real quick and give the audience a little bit of background on yourself and how you ended up in this space. Well, it feels like I've been in retail since, gosh, since I was a teenager, starting way back with a, a general store in my family business. And, you know, you get, you get the kick for retail and you just can't seem to shake it. But my entire career has been in retail. I started with Blacks and then moved into Toys R Us. I'm a Toys R Us kid at heart and jumped in at the beginning of e-commerce in Canada, which was incredible. Such a journey and so much learning. And then moved into the source and really started to lead their omni-channel transformation. And being part of retail, it's, it's the club of, of Canadians that come together and continue to try and improve for customers. And I think we're actually on the verge of some real transformation, which is exciting to be part of. I agree with you 100%. What was that character's name in Toys R Us? The, it was the giraffe, right? Jeffrey. Yeah, Jeffrey the giraffe. Awesome. Well, I am way over the moon over today and super excited to be having you on the panel since we met, gosh, a year and a bit ago on at DX3. Your experience leading the transformation in big retail is what really excites me. So let's start by looking through the lens of the customer. What do you think the biggest change from their perspective is and what they now expect from the retail environment? Well, on good, bad, or other, the pandemic brought so much opportunity and so much change for retail. And I think you know, consumers were forced into a world of, of communicating differently with their retailers and uncovered just an incredible wealth of opportunity, all the, these channels to engage in such a different way than they had been with, with traditional physical retail. I yeah. think that over the last few years, our expectations have raised considerably. We expect retailers to have access to data, quick and easy, convenience, access to inventory. Our, our expectations are incredibly high, which puts an incredible amount of pressure on retailers to meet those expectations. I also think as a, as a consumer myself, choice has become overwhelming. You know, out, we have fingertip access to our mobile devices now to information about product, information about brands in ways we've never even imagined. And it's becoming overwhelming for many of us. Where do we start? Where do we look? Who should we be shopping with? And I think those retailers that are finding ways to curate the information and make it easy and, and I, I'd say snackable, but information that answers my question quickly because it's so overwhelming are the ones that are winning in retail right now. Consumers love choice, but they also love to be guided and assisted in a way that allows the purchase to be easy. I, I agree with you. And from your perspective, who do you think 
is executing this well. Now, you don't have to give brands if you're uncomfortable, but, you know, where do you see this working? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, again, my consumer lens, I, I love what Law Boss is doing. I love what they're doing with data. I love what they're doing with shopping experience. I love how they're bridging digital and physical together to make shopping easier for their customers. And I think that those that are winning right now, the brands that are winning are the ones that started the transformation a few years ago. Not those that were forced into it during the pandemic. Those that had the vision to see omnichannel and the value that it could bring move away from the idea of cannibalization between the two channels and find a way that these channels, digital and physical, can complement one another. So I think grocery shopping has become a breeze for so, so many. I think one of the leading Canadian brands, Canadian Tire, they are doing some pretty incredible things. They're taking their traditional model and layering in all of the wonderful benefits of digital. I will always choose my, my hardware needs to go to Canadian Tire. I love that they've taken their loyalty program and transitioned fully into digital. Although yep. I think many Canadians, we all have Canadian, Canadian Tire dollars. Those, those one cent, two cent, five cent dollars somewhere in our homes. It's almost nostalgic to find those and think back to shopping at Canadian Tire so many years ago. And I think there's a lot of retailers that have embraced the idea of omnichannel and, and hopefully moving beyond that term and into just, this is commerce for retail now. This is what customers expect. They don't want to talk about channel. They want to talk about what works for me. I want quick and easy. I want live chat. I want to be able to talk to all of the brands and all of the retailers in the channel I prefer. And some days that is when I call in, some days it is going in physically. Many times though, I do default to live chat or, or text communication. Yeah, yeah. I, I like what you say about the Canadian kitty entire money. I always say that's Canada's second currency. Absolutely. Right? We all have it. Yeah. And I love what you just said about not omni-channel, but what was the word you use? You said not omni-channel, but just more of a... It's just commerce. Like, commerce. That's, and I, I, love the way you, I love the way you say that because I believe that, you know, consumers, that's the way we look at it. And then for retailers to start really putting on their, their consumer hat and say, you know, let's make this so easy for everyone. Yes. Okay. You just brought up a really good point and you said, you know, you sometimes you want to call on the phone. Sometimes you want to do a chat. This is a question that I ask everyone and it's about personalization, the greatest buzzword from marketers today. So now putting on your marketer hat, do you think that personalization can be effective and scalable? Well, personalization has been a buzzword, not just today, probably five years ago. You know, when we all were launching CRM and finding ways to line data, all of those data points and the justification for our investments was because we were going to be able to personalize the experience for our customers. And that personalization would lead to loyalty. It would lead to frequency. It would allow us to tailor all of those experiences for the customer. I think that the brands that understand their customers the best are the ones that are able to personalize. I feel that personalization is 100% dependent on frequency. Okay. You think about, you know, the experience I have when I grocery shop, there's, there's so much frequency there and I'm telling them so much about how my family lives, what we eat, what we consume on a regular basis. Those retailers are the ones that can succeed in personalization and drive my frequency. I think some of the other retailers that don't have that frequency you think about, and, you know, I mentioned Canadian Tire, you know, those hardware stores where people might not be going in as often and they're going in based on a project. So today I'm painting my kitchen, but tomorrow I might be redoing my patio. 
It is so difficult, I think, for some retailers that don't get the frequency of behavior and the data to build that information about their customer. It's so difficult to be personalized. And the more they push to become personalized, the further away they can get from their customer. You know, personalization to me infers a very high curated experience. So if I'm expecting personalization and you present me with something that has nothing to do with what I'm here to shop for, I become immediately disappointed. It's, it's almost like you managing my personal expectations and we have to think that way about our, our customers that are coming in to shop with us. I think that curation is probably a, a closer word to define what we're trying to generate and what we're trying to create for customers. Curation of the information of the product based on previous patterns either of my shopping behavior or customers like me. Curation okay. can guide me down a path versus personalization infers something very specific that you know about me. And I think technology in the next few years is, is going to help us get closer to personalization. But again, it's all rooted in how well do you know your customer and what do you want to commit to? Because you can lose them very, very quickly if you set expectations that are too high, especially right now, because consumers are expecting so much, you can lose them quickly. And I think that if we go back to marketing basics of know your customer, know your brand, know what you're providing, you can determine, are you personalizing or are you curating? I really love that. I, I'm, I'm absolutely going to take that. I'm going to switch from personalization to curation now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, using personalization, a personal experience, have you had one and how would you change it to make it better? I have what I think retailers are, are defining as personalization, maybe because of my experience, I know what they're aiming to do. They're not quite there. I think you, if you consider my bank, who may not be a retailer, dealing with my bank is, is pretty personalized. They, they know more about me and more information about me than I probably wish they did. Those experiences are, have been fantastic because they're always anticipating my next step. I'd actually say they've mastered the world of curation and continue to guide. I would say in the retailer world, you know, I experience a lot of fair curation and maybe not great personalization. And I will also say I may try to game the system to see what's going to happen next if I did this action or that action. As, as I learn about technology and what I can bring into my roles or to my customers. But I do think the difference is going to be understanding and focusing on the needs of your customers and if you can get to that because many times I mean, retailers may be adding in technology adding in adding in the concept of personalization to generate efficiencies and sometimes generating efficiencies operational efficiencies actually are a detriment to customer experience so i think Understanding and knowing exactly what you're intending to do is the key. I probably am less app-based and more web-based in how I shop and engage with retailers. And mainly because of the data I don't want to share. And I think consumers are becoming very, very savvy in how their data is being used and what they're sharing and are very cautious about who they're engaging with. I think less and less people are, are as open to allowing brands and retailers to follow them the way that they used to several years ago. I agree with that a hundred percent. And I think that it's good from a consumer perspective and just as, you know, people that we are becoming, you know, more paying greater attention to what kind of data we're sharing. And this actually brings me nicely into the next question, which is about the role of 
AI and what it's playing. So the massive explosion with chat uh, CBT customers and brands alike are becoming more comfortable with AI. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I agree with my statement. Maybe some, maybe not. Sites now use personal assistants, bots, and these bots have extremely advanced NLP, NLU, so natural language processing and understanding, making recommendations, answering questions, and guiding, in some instances, all the way through to the payment. How do you see AI impacting the customer experience? And this is a loaded question and a big question, I know. We could probably actually do a whole podcast on it, but we'll just, we'll, we'll leave it there for now and let me know what your thoughts are. Well, mm-hmm. several years ago, before AI was what it is today, I tried to, I tried to launch a, a personal assistant at Toys R Us, and her name was Emma. And I was doing it based on, you know, all of the information, all of the content from the website. And my goal at the time was, well, I didn't call it personalization or curation, but my goal was to present information to the customer that made it easier to shop. And, you know, this was, this was about 10 years ago and we tried very, very hard to manage Emma, but managing the data behind it was, was our downfall. Really trying to learn and understand, you know, different phrases, different search word that customers were using, that's really where the challenges overwhelmed us in trying to manage that. So unfortunately, Emma, Emma was retired. She retired as a Toys R Us kid as well. (laughs) And, you know, I think now where we're at, it's not about the front end experience for the customer. It's really all about the engineering and the back end for the, for the data. And that's what's actually going to drive the improvements in customer experience. It's never about putting a chat bot onto the website. It's never about trying to generate high, high click throughs so that you can reduce call volume. What you really need to focus, and I think retailers are, are starting to understand, is how disappointing it can be if you launch a tool on the website without an incredibly strong foundation of data, understanding the insights, test and learn, test and learn, modify, you know, all of that data cleansing is what's going to generate the incredible customer experiences. I do think personal assistants are going to really start to take off through Q4 and then all of that data, because we will all be shopping, is Mm -hmm. going to lead into 2024 some incredible enhancements in personal assistance. I think we're still going to rely and see a lot of proactive chat, a lot of guidance and curation as we try to feed the engine and and consume more information about Canadian consumers. And then all of that data will be refined and cleaned and enhanced going into Q1 and Q2 of next year. That's where we're really going to start to see the incredible impact AI can have on customer experience. Okay. And what do you think the positives or potential concerns are from using this kind of technology? Personally, for me, I think the positives are going to be a quicker and easier way for me to shop. But I have been all in, in digital experience and digital customer experience for so many years. I do think engagement will start to increase. I think that integrating with feedback tools, survey tools, and collecting insight from customers is going to be a great way to allow customers to feel like they're participating in the changes. You know, there are going to be downfalls because I think many retailers are going to, they're going to jump in and they're going to try to move too quickly based on headlines. And they're going to be distracted by the potential opportunities versus incredibly focused based on their consumer, their strategy, 
you know, their vision for the brand. This is going to take a while to build. It's going to take a while for the data to collect and, and for the backends to be able to generate smarter insights that you can apply to more and more customers. I think that the downfall is we're all going to be overwhelmed with the potential and we're going to try to, try to do too much too soon, which can ultimately lead to disappointment for consumers and ultimately lead to that customer abandoning you because they have high expectations. I think there's incredible upside and that smart, methodical, patient, which is difficult to do in retail. It's not actually a strength of any of ours, but patience in staying committed to the objective of, of leveraging AI and what it can bring those retailers are going to reap the benefits going into the new year. I'm looking forward to fast forwarding a year into the future and then looking back at the three quarters ahead of us and seeing what big changes are going to take place because I, I agree with everything you're saying there. Okay, now we're going to look at it from the Terra consumer perspective again. What experience have you had with an AI personal assistant and how would you have changed it for the better? I actually was looking to uh, buy a car or, you know, upgrade. And I, I, so I'm not very close to automotive. And I have been totally sucked into the tools on all of these different websites, all of the dealer websites. I'm loving what they're doing from my previous driving history, from the vehicles I used to drive. I love the information they're asking about, you know, how frequent I drive. Where am I driving? What am I, what are important features for me? And they're not asking about features of the car. They're actually asking about things that I enjoy. Do I, do I enjoy the air conditioning in my car or do I prefer to have my windows open? I mean, just really unique questions, which make me want to then go into the back end and look at what are they doing with that? What is the insight that they're getting? You know, it's been, it's been pretty, pretty enjoyable. It's actually opened up my mind to a few different brands in ways that I hadn't, you know, I find like Canadian Tire, you're loyal to a brand in when you for your vehicles, you're loyal to a brand. I'm liking what automotive is doing. I'm really liking what they're doing with the data. The build and price your car and everything that you're discussing right now, I just, it's, I, I, I love it. I love how detailed that I can become and how it's instantaneously at, at my fingertips. Whereas okay. You know, even 10 years ago, you had to go into your dealership and you had to sit down for a three hour conversation. But yes. now you can do it all in 20 minutes. Yes. From it's the palm of your hand, actually. It's, 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 it is fantastic. fantastic. And, and I think, you know, there's probably some, a little bit of fear for, you know, the dealerships and fear for the salespeople in there because their entire, their entire history has been based on relationship building and asking all of these questions. But it's very similar to when we really started to get into digital and e-commerce and retail. You know, mm -hmm. consumers were walking into the store far more educated many times than our associates, which is probably what led into Omnichannel and taking all of the content and digital experience and putting it into the hands of our associates. So there was an equality of knowledge and experience, I feel like yeah. we're seeing that in automotive right now, but they've done a really great job. I was surprised. I thought I was going to also be driving and sitting with a dealer and going and doing all my test drives and trying all of this. I felt, I felt empowered and informed when I walked in. That, that's, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. I think it'll be a benefit to the salespeople on the dealership mm -hmm. because the cons customer is walking in again with all this knowledge and then they, they'll feel safer having the conversation, not the, you know, typical, sometimes people get, oh, sales, big ball. Right. Um, okay. So up next, 
years ago, and this is very much what we're talking about now, years ago, retail was about try before you buy. So you go into your Loblaws or it, it still even happens today in Costco. You go in, you know, you try your sample or you go into a beauty store, you get a, a makeover so you can try, try the makeup, whatnot. Times have changed or have they? What do you think will be the next big customer experience over the holiday season this year? I expect to um, a lot of pop-ups that are focused on experience okay. and their secondary goal is to um, drive brand awareness and to sell product. I think that, you know, given the real estate environment, there's a lot of real estate that's available. Uh, within malls or strip malls or even standalones. Yep. I believe that there's going to be a um, cross collab of brands coming together that tie experience and product together. It, it's a, I don't want to say it's a, a low investment, but it's lower investment than an annual lease. Yep. I think we'll see a lot of those pop-ups that are drawing people in to experience something and many retailers are going to take the revenue generation and and put that as the secondary object and i think that cross collabs have become prop the less risky of just going out by yourself and and really starting to look at non-compete brands in ways that they can content a customer experience which is all to our own benefits that we probably weren't looking at at these two brands working. Um, I was with Yorkdale this week and and looking at some of the cross collabs between uh, the retailers. I'm like, oh my God, I wouldn't even have thought of that, but those make sense. You know, I dined in the restaurant um, at Restoration Hardware and I was like, that's an experience I, I didn't expect, but it was incredible. But at the same time, I was sitting in a gallery of incredible furniture. I will probably go back and shop. So I, I see a little bit more of that coming out. Um, those that are focused on brand experience that ultimately can bring in the acquisition to follow. Okay. Another excellent thing that I'm going to keep my eyes open for because I, I, I agree with what you're saying now that, now that you're saying it, I didn't, I wasn't thinking that, but I, I really like that. Mm -hmm. And especially now that, you know, people are out and about again and we're hungry for interaction. So the, the timing would be very good. Okay. We're almost at the end of this amazing conversation, but before we close, I have a question and a game. So the question first is, what resource could be online or offline do you rely on to keep up to date on things like customer experience and retail customer experience? I probably am I'm, I'm part of a um, small community of um, CX uh, leaders, uh, and it all actually was curated through LinkedIn. And many of us will share our experiences, um, things that have worked, things that haven't worked. And... I am also, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm curious. I like to stay curious. I will go to random brand and I will consume what their experience is like. I spend a lot of time, well, probably too much time online browsing so I can see who else is doing great things that I can, I can leverage. I think it is a great compliment if I were to leverage it in, in my brand experience. So um, it is probably based on my, my shopping, my excessive shopping habit. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Okay. We're going to play a game of this or that. So you can't think about it. You just have to answer what comes to mind first. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Paper book or ebook? Paper book. I know this one, I think. Shopping in store or online? Online. Okay. Text Absolutely. or call. Text or call. Oh, I'm a, I love to talk to people. I like, I just, I'm a people person. I love to talk to people. 
Wow. That it that you're the first person that said that so far. Okay. Good to know. I'll remember that. Streaming or live TV? I stream. I'm I'm addicted to all of the streaming services. Okay. This isn't this or that, but how many streaming services do you have? I think we are we are at five right now. And it's just because of the choice. I love the choice. Yeah. I, I, and they curate fantastically. Exactly. Right. Okay. Burgers or tacos? Burgers. Okay. Self-checkout or cashier? Self-checkout. Okay. <clears throat> now, somebody threw something else in here last time I asked this, so I'm going to see if you do the same thing. Crossword puzzles or word search? Crossword puzzles? Um, I do love a good crossword puzzle. I don't have another thing, although I spend a lot of time, I don't know, I probably less time sitting quietly and patiently doing crosswords. I probably go for more of the uh, physical activity than the calming mental activity that I should be doing. But the, the last person I uh, spoke to said Sudoku. And I was like, oh, yeah. Or I could put in there Wordle or, yeah, Wordle. Wordle, I love. We do that as team building on our calls. I love Wordle. Uh, Sudoku, or I just, it just, my brain doesn't work. It doesn't work to to understand how to do that. But um, yeah, Wordle, of all of them, you should definitely add that as the this or that. Yeah, I think I'm going to for sure. Oh my goodness. Thanks again for joining us for our podcast today. It was wonderful chatting with you. I am so happy that we had the opportunity to connect again. And yeah, thank you. Oh, well, this was fantastic. I, you know, we'll, uh, we'll schedule a date a year from now to reflect to see if we were close um, on any of our thoughts and to really reflect on the changes within customer experience. I mean, I'm thankful to uh, participate in this with you, Heather. I mean, I would, I would talk to you about this for hours on end, but uh, the more we can share, the better. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Thank you again, Tara. That's it for this episode of CX Education. Thanks for joining us. This show is brought to you by Cinch, the technology company that helps you create mobile experiences your customers love. Did you enjoy the episode? Then make sure to subscribe to CX Education wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts or visit cinch.com slash podcast to get instant access to all the latest episodes.